Okay, my fellow energy geek friends, welcome back to another episode of the Energy Freak Show here. Today, I'm going to start a series on resurrecting my old 55-gallon biogas digester. This has been chucked by the wayside uh, many years ago. And there are a lot of stories to tell between here and there. A lot of projects come and gone. Um, uh, one less wife, probably due in part to my obsession with projects, um, <laughs> in part. And let's see, fewer people around too. So now I have time for these old projects, which uh, now with the price of fuel, holy smokes, this might actually make sense, right? So um, what we've got here is the digester. We've got a feeder. We've got an outlet tube. We've got gas out. And we've got a thermal well here for, uh, just check the temperature. So what happens is, waste goes in here. There's an active wasp nest in there. So I'm gonna keep a little distance. Waste goes in here into the top. There's a slurry that comes up to the outlet tube and that overflows into a bucket and that bucket of slurry smells great by the way that goes straight into the compost and it composts really well all we're doing with biogas is extracting the gas in an anaerobic chamber no air can get in there or the methanogens Methanogens, the microorganisms that uh, do all the work for us to release the carbon and hydrogen that gets turned into energy that's all we're doing we're releasing the gases and the slurry remains nitrogen rich and that goes into the compost which goes back into the soil so we've got uh, the basic uh, digesting vessel this is, i call this the generator really it's a gas generator and what happens next is i got this old water barrel another 55 gallon drum i mean it could be anything it doesn't have to be this black is good because black is um black means it's going to collect some heat or absorb more heat and you want this to be around 100 degrees we'll get into all those details as we go down the road here so what's special about this barrel though well what's special about nothing living in here special about these two barrels is that one fits inside the other very nicely and that's important because when the gas comes out here it goes into a gas fitting that will go here and that all gets pushed into this barrel that's filled with water and all the air is evacuated now as this generates gas it sends it over into this barrel and as it fills up the barrel will rise and once the barrel has risen we might have enough to do a barbecue and that's my goal, is to do a barbecue a week on this. I think that's probably about all we can hope for. Maybe a little more, maybe two a week. We'll see how that goes. Um, I've got all of the numbers uh, in the Homeowner's Energy Handbook. And I'm working on an update to that book, to that chapter on biogas in that book that will be av available soon, if not now. And of course, there's a link to that. No good video goes without a product behind it and so if you want the details if you want the math and the numbers and how to work all this out create a recipe all of that is in there by the numbers um, it's not hard to do if you can compost you can make biogas so digester water container gas collection that's going to go out to our burner so that we can do our little barbecue experiment now, what I am a little concerned about is that I don't have enough feedstock. When I first got this started, we had animals, pigs and chickens. I don't have them this year anyway. That may change. Um, and also I had, well, I was married to somebody who actually loved to garden, which eh, I'm not a big gardener. I harvest energy. I'm really bad at harvesting green things. So feedstock is gonna be an issue. I'm gonna to have to beg, borrow, and steal some feedstock, and I'm not exactly sure what, where that's gonna come from yet. 
My goal is all food scraps. I'm going to have to inoculate it with something with meth methanogen, meth methanogen, since there's enough dairy farms around here. Cow manure is a great source of meth methanogens. Meth methanogens, methanogens. Pig manure is another good one. I've heard people have success with multiple types of manures. I know for sure that cow manure is loaded with methanogens. Great inoculant. It's like making a sourdough. You know, you have to start with something that has the yeast that you want. Metha methanogens aren't a yeast, but the equivalent of to get your process, your chemistry started. So if I find enough feedstock, I can make enough gas to do something realistic. Now, realistic with something this size, like I said, is only going to be a couple of barbecues a week. Not enough to support your family, but you could scale this up, you know, to... 10 or 20 or 100 times what this is using any number of methods to store gas and have you know, all you need is basically you need a body you need an in entrance you need an exit and you need a gas port all right so it's all the same and you need proper temperature your belly's going to be the same temperature as this system needs to be you're maintaining another mouth to feed you're maintaining an ecosystem once you get things going, it's, it'll work. Um, if you mess with it too much, alter the diet, things will start to, you know, you, it's going to get indigestion. So we're going to look for a consistent feedstock that's going to give us consistent gas quality that we know what uh, to expect from. All right, I think that's it for episode number one here. Um, I'm going to try to find the miscellaneous parts and pieces that are missing in order to put this system together and get it all hooked up and and working again. And we'll go through some of the details as we work through each of those processes. All right, stay tuned. Methanogens.